uh, peace and unity to all. Bang, squat, 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 yeah. Oh. Hope everyone's having a very, very, very good AM. I'm still debating if I should stay live on here. Or should I go on Instagram? Or should I go on Facebook? I don't really know which way I should go live. But I guess I'll stay here. I'll fuck with y'all today. So I'll stay here. I'll talk to you in my 30s today. I'll talk to y'all today. I actually feel like dealing with some of the trolls today because I noticed my Instagram don't really have trolls like that. And then my Facebook don't have trolls. Only my Periscope have trolls. So I might fuck with the trolls today. I actually feel like talking some shit. But look. I'm going to give y'all 10 ways to be extremely wealthy in this world. And I'm going to tell you the first thing to being wealthy. The first thing to being wealthy is a healthy mind and healthy ears. It's the first step to being wealthy. Healthy mind, healthy ears. Which means you got to look at wealth and you got to hear wealth. Look and hear. It's all you should be looking at and it's all you should be here. Stop looking at broke shit. Stop looking at bum ass motherfuckers. Stop worshiping and idling bum ass motherfuckers. Stop listening to bum ass motherfuckers. First step is looking and listening to what? Now, most of you, or not most of you, but some of you may have cable television. Some of you, or maybe half of you, or maybe majority of you may have cable television. And I've noticed a sign Most people who have cable television watch majority of the channels that will not do nothing for them. One day, when I was younger, I decided to flip through all the channels. From channel 1 all the way to like channel 9000 or some weird shit. I forgot what channel we had. One day, I decided to flip through all the channels. And I realized that whenever I seen a channel of people in business suits talking about the Dow Jones and the stock market and shit, I automatically skipped over it. Because my mind wanted to watch cartoons, my mind wanted to watch basketball, my mind wanted to watch nigga Urkel Martin, my mind wanted to watch all of that shit. Whenever I seen someone talking about some numbers with paperwork in their hand, I automatically skipped over it. Because my mind was so used to seeing broke shit. Everything that looked like it was boring, quote unquote boring to the average broke motherfucker, I skipped over it. I skipped over all the shows of them talking about the stock market. I skipped over all the shows of them talking about financial investments and financial advisory. I skipped over all the shit of them actually talking about something that really meant something. And the same thing went from once I started getting on YouTube. You get on YouTube and you look for all the wrong shit. You look for how to make shoes. You look for, you feel, not how to make shoes. You look for what's the new shoes. You look for what's the new video games coming out. You look to see who on World Star. You look to see what new music you can listen to. You look for all the wrong shit. And I started to notice that, right? I started to notice a trait. The average person that is in a low, like, 
a low financial scenario is only and single-handedly based on the simple fact that all they watch or all they focus on is low-end financially uh, scenarios. All of them. I'm, why? Because I'm a person that started off financially poor and I'm okay now. I'm not wealthy, so I don't want anyone in here to think I'm wealthy, because wealth is like some shit that can't fuck up, but like, I can fuck up, it's just about enough money that I can fuck up, like I can fuck up and buy the wrong investment, and it's over for all my everything I ever did, right, wealth, it ain't going nowhere, you can fuck up, you lose 20 million, all nigga, you bounce back. Right. That's wealth. Shit ain't going nowhere. Like your great great grandson to be okay. Right. Like it's gonna take generations to fuck up wealth. Right. So, like I said, you know, I noticed the valuable trait right, is what you watch and what you hear. Now, once I got in a position and I started to move up in the financially, financially economics, economic system, look at, look at me trying to sound smart, the financially economic system, which has hindered me from my full potential of being a successful business entrepreneur and Shut the fuck up, nigga. You know, motherfucking smart ass nigga trying to sound all smart and shit, nigga. But boom, right? Hey, but see, that's even fucked up, right? It's fucked up that I even have that thought of telling myself not to sound smart. I blame that on E40. E40, the reason why I don't want to be smart, nigga. I want to be stupid. Go stupid. Go down. Go down. Go down. It's fucked up that our minds think like that. See, that's the mind of a broke nigga. Feel me? I got to get those programs out of my house. Nigga, I am smart. So like I was saying, the financial ladder of the economic system, which will help you upgain full potential in being maximally exposed to entrepreneurship, proper investments, resource, secure the bag, squat, bang, bang. You feel me? But no, so like I said, you know, You gotta you gotta feed your mind different things. So one thing I've learned, right? One thing I've learned from moving up in in my friends, right? I don't even want to say the financial ladder. My friends moved up, right? Right? My friends. So I became I, I got in a situation to where I was around very successful people. Like rich ass Jewish white niggas. Wait, what the fuck is the difference between a white nigga and a Jewish nigga? I still don't understand. But more of the story is, I started to hang with a lot of rich ass Jewish ass white niggas. Right? And I learned a valuable thing about these niggas. You got to look at the shit they read and the shit they listen to and the shit they watch. You ever been to a rich ass Jewish nigga house? You know what they watch? Niggas. Niggas. All they do is watch niggas all day. They spend 90% of their day Watching niggas. Seeing how they can profit extremely off of niggas. Oh my God, look at that kid right there. He's very talented. Let me put a million dollars behind him and make him believe that he's going to be famous. And after he even makes it famous, I'm going to tell him that he owes me $60 million dollars. For even me investing into him, then we're gonna take all his money. <laughs> right. 
But no, 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 some real shit. I started hanging around a lot of Jewish motherfuckers. I started hanging around a lot of white people. And I started to learn traits. I started to look at what they paid attention to, what they watched, what they read, what times they read, what type of book. Like, all right, right? How many unsuccessful people got a bookshelf? I learned that. I learned that broke niggas don't have a bookshelf. I learned it. I learned that reading is not a thing to do in the broke community. Broke niggas don't read. Broke niggas don't study. Broke niggas don't figure it out. Why? Because I was once a broke nigga. Now, what you got to understand, Rich, you mad broke right now, G, because you just unplugged from the bullshit. You mad broke right now, G, but you just unplugged from the bullshit. It's always hard when you unplug. Right? It's always hard when you unplug. See, the thing is, you got some people that's okay with making minimum wage. You got some people that's okay with making nigga twenty dollars an hour. You got the average person, you say, hey, we hiring at twenty dollars an hour. A nigga will drop, stop, drop, and roll in a pile of dog shit for a twenty dollar an hour job. Right? A nigga, if there's like, hey, I'm high, I'm, I'm hey, I'm a big corporation. My name is John Taco Bell, but we're hiring for twenty dollars an hour. We'll hire anyone that rolls in the pile of dog shit. You know how many niggas will roll in the pile of dog shit for a $20 an hour job? Now let's really think about this. $20 an hour. Look, I, I want you to really think I'm, I'm about to do some math of vacations. You feel me? When you when you from the hood and you don't really know all the words, you got to mix them all together. So let me do some math applications. Feel me? All right, twenty dollars an hour. Right. That's one sixty a one sixty a day. Now you got to take away. You don't because you're not working eight hours a day. Ugh. You don't work eight hours a day, you work seven hours a day. They trick you into thinking you work eight hours a day. Right? But you don't work eight hours a day. You actually get a fifteen two fifteen minute breaks and you get a thirty minute break. So you actually work seven hours a day. Or sometimes you get a fifteen minute break and thirty minute break. So like I've said, you actually work seven hours a day. So boom. Right? Right? So you get a hundred some dollars a day, hundred Hundred, hundred forty dollars a day, plus taxes taken out. So you're getting about hundred twenty dollars a day, right? I want you to think about this. Plus all, of, but think about it. You spending, you don't work seven hours a day. You work more than that because you have to add in the amount of hours it takes you to get ready for work, right? So add in this. Add in how many hours it takes you to get ready for work. Take you about an hour and something to wake up, eat, wash a shower. So that's another hour that you have to dedicate that to work. How long does it take you to get to work? Possibly another hour, depending on how far you work. That's another two hours to get to work. How long does it take you to get home from work? Maybe another hour. So that's another hour for work, plus the babysitter, whatever you got. So literally, you're technically going to work 18 to 19 hours a day. Then you have to spend the next couple of hours sleeping so you can be full rested. And you're making $140 a day. So I want you to think about this, right? I want you to add this up. They're homeless people. Time, right? We're talking about time. You're sacrificing time. You're sacrificing time. There's homeless people. 
I've seen it. There's homeless people. Right? There's people who stand on the corner with a sign that says, I'm going to keep it real with you. I just need money. Don't ask me what I need money for. I'm not broke. I got a job and all that, but I just need money. I've seen people stand on the corner and panhandle $600 to $700 a day. Reg, you've been to California, but this goes to everybody that's broke. If you broke and you live in a fucked up part of the world, move your broke ass to California. Save up all the money you got. Move your broke ass to California and panhandle. All panhandlers out here is filthy fucking rich. A California panhandler makes about four hundred to five hundred to eight hundred dollars a day. A California panhandler. Let me tell you how I know this. I used to sell dope when I was younger. So if there's any police on here, you can't catch me now, nigga. It's already over with, nigga. I ain't selling it no more. When I was younger, I used to sell dope. Right? And there used to be crackheads that brought me at least $300 a day. The same crackhead kept coming back with $20 bills. I used to ask myself, where the fuck is this motherfucking crackhead getting money from? Where? I thought you were homeless. Where the fuck do you keep getting these $20 from? Where? So one day, because you, well, you got to understand, right? You got to understand this, right? Drug dealers make a lot of money, right? I want you to really think about this. Drug dealers make a lot of money. But where do drug dealers get the money from? The crackhead. So the crackhead is actually rich before the drug dealer. You got to think about this. So boom. If crackheads didn't smoke money, they would have millions, right? Because a crackhead has a valuable trait that the average broke person don't got. The average broke person is sitting around somewhere waiting for someone to pay them. A crackhead is doing whatever he or she can to get the bag. That means I'm going in trash cans, I'm going in whatever to get the bag, right? Boom, right? So I've seen crackheads with shopping carts with like eight bags of cans tied into the shopping cart. Bam, go recycle that, that's a good $85. But just that fast, 85 Bam. Right. Then on top of the panhandling, boom, they make an extra. Oh, look. Look, what I'm saying is this. It's hustle. Right? I'm not telling y'all to be crackheads. I'm not telling y'all to just say fuck life. But what I'm telling you is hustle. Right? The average broke person in the world lacks hustle. When I deal with these white niggas and these Jewish niggas, I realize they don't have time for bullshit. It's hustle. Every moment of their life, they're thinking about how to get the bag. Right? They're thinking. So you got you got you got the slave owners that'll tell you that ain't hustling, that's looking for handouts, right? 
got the slave owners that will tell you that. That ain't hustling. That's looking for handouts. You should go work hard for someone else to make them rich. Right? When y'all see people like that, that say, oh, that's a handout. That's a person that wants you to be a slave. That's a person who lived by the rules of the program. No, go do 20 hours in college. That's a person that's telling you, oh, go to college. You should go to school. So when you leave out of school, you'll be in debt more than you was when you went to school, before you went to school. You ever think about that? See, you think that you going to school because you about to get a good job. No, you're going to somebody else's business. The fucking school is a hustler. The LA, LA Unified or Seattle or whatever fucking school, the Unified School District is a fucking hustle. I walk because walking is healthy. That's what the fuck rich people do in the fucking morning. Wake up and walk because we don't have to fucking go to work. Look at these two motherfuckers out there, rich. Look at those fucking million dollar houses over there, rich. Look where the fuck I'm walking at, rich ass trail. Look at this nice ass grass, rich. Look at it, eat it. Rich. Bitch, I live in the fucking best part of California. I live in the best part of motherfucking California. Irvine, California. The most successful as motherfucking part of California in the fucking world. That's why I'm walking. I got on my fucking pajamas. Fresh out the house. Jacket, which is my own brand. I'm out here. Good morning. Good morning, G. Homeless people are not allowed in Irvine, California. They're not allowed. You can't be homeless out here. The police will not allow. It. Oh my God, what's that? That was called a purified Irvine air burger. Mm. Mm. That burger tastes good. <sighs> but look, right? On the flip side, on the flip side, now I always get stopped by the police. Always. Always get stopped by the police. Always. Hey, what you doing around here? Living, nigga. I made it. Get your bitch ass off me, nigga. I made it. Nigga, you didn't expect that, huh? They got over. Guess how I got over here? Panhandling. Guess how I pay my rent? Panhandling. Nigga, I drive down to the city, panhandle for about three or four hours, come back home, pay my rent. <laughs> Beat the system. Fuck you gonna do? Get out of here. Fuck you, nigga. Stop. Right? But no, bigger than that, right? <clears throat> bigger than that, like I said, I went to school. I want y'all to know this, right? I went to school. I'm a college graduate. Uh, I do a lot of I do a lot of things in my work. Uh, how you doing? I do a lot of things. I went to school. I graduated from college. Uh, I have my degree in business administration. One of the worst decisions I ever made in my life because. They lied to me. Right? School lied to me. I spent hella time in school learning about business, trying to understand the business. Right? I go to school. Hey, what's your major? What do you want to take up? Uh, shit, nigga. I'm trying to get some money. Nigga, I want to learn the business. Oh yeah, here it is. Take up business administration. All right, I take up business administration. I'm learning all the bullshit. Boom, boom, boom. Four years later, I graduate. Oh, graduation. Hey, you know what I'm saying? Hey, and on the way, on the way from the stage, uh. Make sure you check your mailbox in a couple of days. We'll have a gift for you. Well, uh, check my motherfucking mailbox. Oh, yeah. Uh, after we gave you that piece of paper on the stage, you now owe us uh, $250,000. What? Yeah, and not only do you owe us this money, 
You know, it, it takes money to start a business. You're not just going to get a business. Wait, 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 what? Huh? Wait, what? Yeah, uh, you know, you don't just get a business after you graduate. Wait, what did I come to school for? You came to school to learn how it works, but you actually got to have money already to start a bit. Oh, shit. I was fucked. I was completely fucked when I got out of college. No, I didn't know that. I'm a black child from the hood. Our parents don't know shit. I'm a, I grew up in the hood, so I didn't know shit. My mom and my parents sent me straight to the trap. I didn't know a goddamn thing. I'm from the hood. All your parents tell you is get a good education and go to school. That's what my parents told me. Boy, you better take your ass to class and get a good education. Yeah, nigga, education. That's what my parents told me. Get an education. But take your ass to school. Get a, get your ass up. Go get an education. Right. So, bam. I did that. I got my education. And I was fucked. I still owe the school right now. I owe... The school money right now, and they not getting a goddamn dime. You motherfucker scammed the dog shit out of me. You not getting a goddamn dime. Right. So, do you own a house? I like that question. No, I don't own a house at all. I don't want a house. There's absolutely no point to buy a house unless you're going to flip the house. Right? There's no point to own a house. Why? Because the setup. Buying a house is also a setup, right? Why? Because you gotta pay for it till you fucking die. There is no way to actually buy a house. You gotta have to pay property taxes and land taxes till you fucking die. There is no you can't is this there's no way to really buy nothing. This is a setup. So I told myself, I don't want to buy no house yet because I don't want nobody else to move into the house. Because I don't want to be like a fucking landlord. Right? I don't want to be, I don't want to, that's not my forte, right? Everybody has a skill set. Everybody's good at something else. Mine, I don't really care about houses like that. Right? And to even ask yourself, to even tell yourself that you need a house is... A setup. Right? You don't necessarily need a house. Or you don't necessarily need a big house. All you need is shelter when times get rough. Like when times get too cold at temperatures that can actually kill the human being. Or shit like that. It's actually, actually you just And when it rains too hard, you don't want to get wet and cold. So that's what you really need. You don't really need a big house. You don't really need furniture. You don't need a couch. You don't need a TV. You don't need none of that. Right? You don't really need none. All of that shit is programs that you don't really need. Right? The quote unquote luxury. You don't need it. You don't look at, you don't need any of that. Right? All you need is some place to be warm so you can fucking survive to the next day. That's really it. And right now, I can tell y'all this, right? And the reason why I'm telling y'all this is I'm not a billionaire. I don't want you to think I'm a billionaire. I'm not even a millionaire. I don't have millions of dollars. But one of the reasons why I don't have millions of dollars is because my money is facilitated. Right? I... Me, as a person, I will not have million dollars in my lifetime. But every, like I, like, I have a cool amount of money stashed away somewhere. I have a few Bitcoins. I have, you know, little things in the world. But my money is so scattered out is because I'm planning for my sons. right? And I also have another son on the way. So I'm planning, right? All my money is put in a lot of little scenarios. So when I die, they'll have the life. I put my money into books, I put my money into information, I put my money into stocks, I put my money into all type of other shit. 
So when I die, they will understand this shit. So it's not about it's not about me. I'm making a sacrifice for the next generation. Like most very successful people do. Most people are extremely successful because someone else above them in their family or or you know, vice versa. Like wealth is passed down, right? Information is also passed down. I would be a lot more successful if I would be a lot more successful if my parents actually knew something. My parents didn't know a goddamn thing. They didn't know nothing. So that's why it took me so long to get to where I'm at. Like, I think about this. If I would have knew half the things I knew right now when I was younger, right? My mom didn't teach me about credit. My mom didn't teach me about good credit. She didn't teach me about building your credit. She didn't teach me about nothing. She didn't teach me about, they didn't, my mom and my dad didn't teach me about shit. All they did was put clothes on my back and fed me bullshit food and made me go to school or made me go play sports. They didn't teach me nothing. So that's where I'm at. Right? 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 That's where I'm at in my life. My life is based on the simple fact that I'm creating <sighs> all of these outlets, right? Well, let's put it like this. I look at myself the same way I look at a, a character like Jesus or whoever you worship or whatever. I look at myself in, in these type of these type of lights, right? Make the sacrifice, right? I shouldn't even be on I dog, I can be doing something other with my time right now. Like actually on the market, watching shit go up and down, investing, moving, and all type of shit. But I'm here to try and help y'all. Right? So I learned about this, right? Most extremely wealthy and successful people think for the future, right? And they say this, right? They say most people really hit that hit the home run in their 30s. Most very extremely successful people hit the home run in their 30s. Right? I'm 32, it'd be 33 in February. It's right around that time, dog. It's right around that time. And it's crazy because as I age, everything starts to become completely clear to me. How the world works starts to become extremely clear. Everything is becoming clear. Like how to maneuver, who to talk to, what to look at, what to read, what to study, what to invest in. So boom. I'll tell you something. I'll give you a plot. Okay? I'll give you an epic plot. I'll give you an epic plot of something that I've seen. Right? I've seen Mexicans hustle. Mexicans have something that a lot of people don't really understand. They have hustle and drive like no other. I've seen Mexicans turn nothing into something extremely huge. I've seen it. I've seen Mexicans turn a lot, right? A lot. Mexicans are like crackheads without the crack. Right? Mexicans are like crackheads but without smoking crack. They do all the crackhead shit, but they just don't smoke the actual rock. Right? They got the work ethics of a crackhead. Right? So I'll, I'll give you a little scenario, right? My boy Pedro. I remember when Pedro and them first got out here. Like, boom. Pedro told me. When he moved in our neighborhood, he was like, yeah, my, my parents just came from Mexico. They brought me out here. But when he was barely speaking English, the only way we knew what he was saying because our homeboy Sergio used to, like, translate for him. Boom, boom, boom. So they barely moved out here. Boom. They mom used to whip up tamales, right? They mom used to, they mom used to make tamales. 
So when she started making tamales, she knew where all the Mexican people was. So she would make tamales and then she would sell them by the laundromat. Two for a dollar tamales, chicken tamales, beef tamales, whatever. Two for a dollar tamales. Within one year, within one year, they had like a dope ass car. This is people who came over here and didn't have a crumb, right? They were living with their uncle. Within one year, they had a dope ass car and the car stayed parked in the driveway. I had no idea why they bought a brand new car, but didn't drive it. I had no idea. Like I'm talking about a brand new car, fresh off the lot. They didn't even drive it. They just bought it. I had no idea why they buy it, right? Because I was young. It didn't really register in my head. So, boom, the car set in the driveway. After selling tamales, they had a smaller ice cream truck. Like, you know, the little, the bing, 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 little the push cart. They had a smaller little push cart ice cream truck. Boom. Within a year and a half, they had two cars in the driveway two cars they didn't drive them i had no idea why they didn't drive the fucking car right it's all gonna make sense wait till the elbow kick after about two years they had a catering truck the actual full catering truck like one of those street car catering trucks Boom, 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 boom. Before you know it, on year three, they bought the house next door to the house that they, they little family smuggled them into America with. So they smuggled them into that house. The very house next door, within three years, they bought the house next door. After they bought the house next door, I seen them take those two cars that they never drove. They put the cars into that house in that yard. That was the first time I ever seen them drive the cars. They moved the cars from this yard to that yard. By this time, my boy knew English. Right? So I go, hey, Pedro, like, why y'all got those cars and y'all never drove them? You know what this nigga told me? And my mom's building their credit, G. These niggas got the cars and let them sit and just paid them off. Remind you, they, they couldn't drive them because they didn't even have licenses and shit. They didn't even have licenses. They didn't have no fucking paperwork. They have nothing. So they probably got the cars from one of their little, you know, Mexican little hookups. Boom, boom, boom. They just built their goddamn credit with whatever social security cards they had. They just build their credit. Now, boom. Now, within the next three years, these motherfuckers ain't have nothing. This next three years, they got high credit. They got high credit score. On top of that, they have saved maximum money because they don't buy clothes. They don't buy shoes. They're not buying all material items. They not buying none of that shit. They don't watch TV. They don't watch cable. They might watch TV. They might get the bullshit old channel and watch Telemundo. You feel me? Telemundo. They might watch their Telemundos every blue moon. But other than that, other than that, they didn't spend money on all the bullshit. So boom, they saved. They bought a house. They got good credit. Now let me tell you what they did. They used their money, right? That they've been saving up from the catering truck, the ice cream truck, and the motherfucking uh, the tamale thing. They used that money to rebuild the house. So they took maybe a $200,000 house and turned the bitch into a million dollar house. Shit was two stories. Nigga, they had all type of marble floors, all type of shit. Boom, boom, boom. They sold the house, dog. They sold the house for like one point some, one point two some million dollars. Boom. After they sold the house for one point two million dollars, guess what they did? Guess what they did? They went and bought a tent and lived downtown L.A. These niggas who are just 
These motherfuckers just cashed out on some millions. They went and bought a tent and lived downtown LA. So now they have 1.2 in their account and they don't even have a house. Right? For the next four years, they lived in a tent downtown LA. She was still selling her tamales because I guess the, her cousins used to let her make the tamales and shit at the house. She was still selling her tamales. Boom. Now, here, watch, watch, watch how the story flip. They put an ad on Craigslist, right? Telling someone they have a brand new car with zero miles on it. And they are willing to lease the car to you. No credit approved. No credit check approved. They got two brand new cars they never drove. Boom. Now, they got niggas paying them every month. They're about to get their full investment back for the two cars they bought. So now, they got some other little Mexicans paying them every month to keep the car. Boom. Right? So then, what they do, they got one point some million. They got a couple of cars. I mean, they got a fucking tent. A couple of little fruit, fruit trucks and all that shit. They got one point some million dollars. They go buy more cars. Right? They use the 1.2 to buy a small little lot. And they go to Craigslist and buy some more cars. Put the little lot, the cars on the lot and tell people, hey, you guys can get the cars. No credit check, no financial check. Just as long as you have a $400 deposit, the car is yours. Then they pay a little extra money to get some more ads on Craigslist and more ads and penny saver and all that shit. Boom, 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 boom. Now, they are, this is two, this is fucking two illegal immigrants that came over here and turned something into an actual business. Now, they're a car lot. They're an actual car lot. Right? So now, Pete, they got at least about 90 niggas on the lease. Right? They got 90 niggas on the lease paying them motherfucking $300 a month to drive a car. They don't even have a house and they got people paying them every month to drive a car. Boom, as time progressed, guess what they bought after that? They sent some money back to their people in Mexico. The Mexico niggas bought a nice little farm, all type of shit from the farm. They bought a big ass farm, hella cattle, all type of shit, right? Guess what they used the rest of their money on? They bought a grocery market. So now they got the Mexicans back and they got all the livestock and they got a market out here. Boom. Bring all the meat, dog. Bring all the food. Get all the shit. Smuggle all the meat, all the oranges, all the shit. Boom, boom, boom. So now they got a whole grocery market. They went from selling tamales to having a car dealership to fucking having a grocery store. It's hustle. This is a different type of hustle, and I learned that from my my vatos. I learned that from my Mexicans, my essays. They got a different form of hustle. They see things completely different, right? They see things completely different. They seen things from the they seen things from a crackhead point of view, but they just didn't smoke the crack. They seen things completely different. And I that stuck with me when I was coming up. That whole that whole scenario stuck with me. Like, yo, it's bigger than all the small shit. It's bigger than all the small shit that we be seeing and perceiving as big. You gotta have a problem. Like, I mean a plant. They started from the bottom. They started all they started all the way. When I say all the way, they started all the way from the bottom. Now they really there. So what I'm saying is this, right? They had a plan. Now guess what? Guess how the plan keep going? They go to Mexico and get three more people. They smuggle three more people into their house. Into their tent. They got you gotta think. 
When you live in a house, your police come raid your shit. When you have a tent, you kind of live off the grid. So they smuggle some more people into their little tent downtown. You know what they do? Buy all three of them ice cream trucks, and now they all working for the thing. Then they going to do the same thing, and then it's going to keep flipping and flipping and flipping and flipping and flipping. So my moral of the story is to tell you this, right? I've seen people with no money. I've seen people without even a social security card. I've seen people that didn't even speak English come to America and be extremely successful within five to six years. My moral of this is to say, if you are broke or you are struggling in this world, it's because you don't have hustle. That's it. And that's all. There's no other way around it. If you are broke or struggling or low income, it's because you don't have hustle. That's it. You are literally sitting down complaining. That's it. That's literally it. How do y'all know what I have? Dog, there's millions of police on here. There's snitches. There's FBI. There's all type of credit people. I'm not going to get on here and tell y'all what I have. Why would I do that? That's stupid. No, nigga, I'm broke. I'm extremely broke. They don't got to die. My moral of the story is hustle, right? It's easy. Just Google me. Daylight, Devon Campbell. I have many different names that does many different things. 50 Cent just played bankrupt and then counted a picture of hundreds of thousands of dollars in the shape of 50 Cent's. But he pled bankrupt. Yeah, I'm broke. I don't got to die. But my moral of this. Right. My moral of this is to say. Hustle. Ambition. Hustle. Ambition. Right. That's it. I've literally tried everything. I've literally tried everything. Now, it was harder for me. Dog, I've been telling y'all about Bitcoin before Bitcoin was popping and nobody listened to me. You know how many people I tried to get on Bitcoin? How long have I been telling y'all about this shit? How long have I been telling y'all about the deep web, the dark web? Or how long? I've been telling y'all about this shit for the past, like, telling y'all about this for years. And nobody never listened to me. I told y'all I knew about Bitcoin a long time ago when you were when you can buy when when you can buy shit from the D Web. Also, before it was even popping like that, I knew about cryptocurrency because I used to pimp bitches. I used to pimp bitches, and that was the only way for motherfuckers to pay you. Now y'all think I'm you think I'm joking. I'm like dead serious. Backpage, when you was on backpage or you was fucking doing the Craigslist, flipping the bitches, it was only one way. Bitcoin. That was the only way for motherfuckers to buy the bitches because the police started cracking down on all the shit, so we had to find a currency that couldn't be cracked. This shit was a long time ago. I've been trying to talk about this crypto shit. I just pulled out. I'm done. I'm no longer in the crypto shit. 
And I advise everybody that's in the crypto market to pull the fuck out right now. Get the fuck out of there. Get out. Like, right now would be the dumbest time to ever get into Bitcoin. Idiot. Do not. Don't think about getting into that shit right now. You got to be crazy. Why would you pay fifteen to sixteen thousand dollars for an imaginary coin? It's not even a real physical coin. It's like an imaginary digital number that can't be traced. Was eleven k right now? I don't know. I'm out of it. Why? Why would you pay eleven thousand dollars for an imaginary item? The shit was like three dollars when I bought them. Right. More of the story is I don't care about crypto. I don't care about none of that. Nobody cares about none of that. Let's stop being lazy. Stop being lazy. Look, it's funny how everybody know about crypto. Everybody talk about crypto. Oh, crypto. Yeah, you know, I know all about this. You niggas focus is in the wrong areas. It's funny how nobody knows how to hustle. Nigga, we talk about crypto. All of a sudden, everybody has something to say about crypto and know exactly what's going on. Look, bro. I don't give a fuck about crypto. I don't give a fuck about none of that. We're talking about hustle. Right? Now, I also learned a valuable thing about money and how money works. Right? Money has a brain. There's a reason why they say on dollar bills and on coins and all that shit in God we trust. Because money is alive. The whole hustle talk, niggas was quiet. Niggas had nothing to say. We started talking about Bitcoin. Everybody got something to say. But the more the story is. The more the story is. Money has a mind. People don't understand why dollar bills have all of that shit on it. Why they have all these codes and all these little secret passages and numbers and all type of shit. Because it's witchcraft on dollar bills. It's all type of shit going on. It's made with a specific type of ink. It's wrote with a specific type of press machine. It's a lot of shit going on in money. I don't want to go that deep. But there's a lot of shit going on with the dollar bill. Now, I'm going to explain to y'all the limbo that I'm caught in. And it's one of the reasons why I chill most of my life. Because when you really think about this, I don't know, I want you to think about this. When you really, really think about the grand scale of all of this, what are you doing it for? What do you even need money for in the first place? Money does not really save lives. Everybody dies. Money doesn't really buy you more time. Money can only say, you know what, while I was alive for my hundred years, I got to eat. Let me, all right, let me tell you the setup, right? Most people get maximum money and they eat shrimp and lobster. Shrimp and lobster is not good for you at all. Nigga, the mercury levels will destroy you. This is the epic setup. The epic setup that they have told us is that. The more money you get, the more you do shit that kill you even faster. Right? Oh, I was holding that shit in for the last like 45 minutes, but I just had to let that one out. Right?
But when you really think about it, right? When you really think about it. See, y'all niggas' attention span is so fucking bad, dog. Y'all niggas got a very, very bad span. Like, it's like sad. Listen to what I'm about to say. You a magical fairy ass bird. Money is a form of distraction. Because the more you try to get the money, the more you won't realize who you are. I spent so much time in my younger days trying to make money that I didn't even learn who I really was. I didn't learn. I forgot. We all have a form of power. Everyone has a special ability. We're all like the X-Men, right? All of us, every last one of us, we're all like the X-Men. Well, for every race, we all, not even X-Men. What was that movie? What was, it, what was the show used to come on TV? Heroes, right? Hero Nagamura and all. We're all like heroes. We all have a special power. All of us have an extremely special power. And I notice that the more and more you try to gain in the financial world, you won't never fully understand who you are. You won't never really understand. Now, we're going to drag this back to the crackhead. Crackheads don't work. They don't work regular jobs. But I learned something about crackheads. They spend a lot of time in the streets and in the sun. They spend a lot of times meditating because they'd be technically strung out on drugs. So they'd be meditating. They'd be inside their own world. The crack cocaine probably send them to the astral plane. Right? Like, remember when, remember in Doctor Strange when she pushed old boy head and he went through all them worlds? When she was, when she pushed on his third eye, he went through all them different worlds. That's probably what it feels like to smoke crack, like smoke a actual crack rock for the first time. You probably, nigga, you probably travel through the galactic astral plane, right? So I learned something about crackheads, right? They're powerful. Crackheads are extremely powerful. They can withstand all kinds of living conditions. I've seen a crackhead carry a refrigerator on a bike on his back. It is on YouTube. You can go watch it. He put an entire refrigerator on his back and then got on the bike. A refrigerator. I think I can't even carry, I can't even carry the refrigerator by myself. Crackhead got a refrigerator on his back and then got on a bike and rolled the refrigerator up the street. I seen a video of a crackhead who fell out of the sky, fell onto a car. He just fell out of the sky. Nobody knows what building he fell off of. He fell off of a building onto a car, hit the ground, got back up and walked off like nothing never happened. I've seen a crackhead, which is my auntie, got shot in the head. Got up and asked us. She came to the house like, man, the motherfucker shot me in the head and take me to the hospital. Her old motherfucking brain was hanging out the back. She went to the hospital to survive. Right. So I learned something about these things. It's a gift and it's a curse. Right. I tried to calculate how are crackheads so strong. 
mentally and physically. And the only thing I can really boil it down to is they have uncalcified pineal glands by smoking maximum crack. They don't use toothpaste, so they're not getting maximum fluoride broken in. Fluoride is destroying all that shit. They don't take baths as much as we take baths, so they're not getting the fluoride pumped into their body through the water. Because typical shower water has maximum fluoride in it, bath water and all that shit come out the faucet. So they're not getting the fluoride water. And they're not eating half of the bullshit or most of the bullshit that we eat. On top of that, they're not working, so their brain is not caught up with, oh, I got to hurry up and get to work this morning or somebody's going to be mad at me. They don't think about that. And on top of that, they sleep all day in the sun. They meditate, sit on the corner in the sun all day. You ever see a crackhead look like he's so burnt, Chris Brown? The nigga been in the sun all day? If you could learn the ways of a crackhead without actually smoking crack and getting addicted to crack, you will be a demigod. If you can actually learn the ways of a crackhead, but without actually smoking the rock, you'll become a demigod. You become invincible. Crackheads are invincible. Yo, I just seen a video of a crackhead getting tased by the police. That nigga was like, God, nigga, this is not going to do shit to me. Nigga, they tased that nigga about six different taser guns. Nigga, none of them shits worked. None of them. Absolutely none of them. That nigga was still... Oh! Nigga, they shot that nigga with the beanbag gun. That nigga took it. Boom. Oh, nigga's not gonna do nothing to me. Yo, yo, yo. Right? Oh. Crackheads, bro. The more story is, we live in a world where people look for a way, right? They look for a way instead of actually trying, right? So you have multiple people coming here saying, yo, how much, how many did you make? It's not for me to say how many did I make. It's for me to tell y'all what to do. It's never about me. Because I don't worship the dollar bill. What I see in this world and what I want in this world is different from what people want in this world. What I want in this world is I want everybody to go back to the jungle where money don't exist. That's what I want. That's what I want. And that's what I plan on doing at the end of this year. I want us to live off the land. I want us to recycle the land. I want us to be one with Mother Nature. I don't really care for money like that. I'm just here spreading knowledge to help y'all. Most people who don't really have a, a end game. Most people who want to live the regular life. The economic life. This is for y'all. It's clearly it's not for me. This is for y'all. Like I'm speaking for y'all. And the few people that actually care about the dollar bill. It's not for me at all. I'm just letting y'all know how easy it is to make money in this world. That's it.
morning, Snoop. What? I said good morning. Good morning. What are you doing? What do you have? How'd you do that? Oh, that's amazing. And now, watch. <clears throat> oh, that's amazing. They both go. And Daddy, I'm hungry. What do you want to eat? I want to eat something. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, so I do walk every morning, uh, I walk 15 to 16 miles every morning. So when people wake up and say, yo, like, what you doing outside? I'm actually outside walking. My kid is homeschooled. He's never been to school ever. Well, he went to school for like a day and a half. He's been homeschooled. My son is seven years old. He's homeschooled and he's like beyond smarter than average bear wait like wait 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 at all yeah walk 15 miles a day every morning my son's home so i would never send him to that program ever ever Now you got to think about this, right? Also, when you think about work and you think about going to work, especially for those who have kids, when you really think about going to work and putting all your time into work, and then you wonder why you don't really have a relationship with your children, you have to think about this. Your son could be 21 years old, 22 years old, 23 years old, and you have to really ask yourself, how long have you actually been in your child's life? Do the math. Sometimes I sit back and think and I go, damn, I didn't do shit with my parents. Nothing. I was actually at school getting raised by some other nigga that I didn't want to listen to because he wasn't my parent. Do you know how easy school would be if your parent was the teacher? So you send your kid to school for eight hours a day. You don't know what your kid's eating. You don't know what they're learning. They're picking up habits from other kids. There's all type of shit going on when you put your kids in the school system. right? They might get bullied. There's all type of shit that happen. Attitudes, energy. When you understand energy and how energy is transferred, you got bad kids. You ever, you ever take your kid around a badass kid and your kid pick up those habits ASAP? Right? You ever did that? You ever you ever brought your kid back from somewhere like nigga, where you learn that shit from? Like I took my son, well, I forgot where I took him. I took him somewhere. No, all right. So we had to go somewhere. So I had let my son stay with um my mom and like the rest of my cousins and shit for like Two, three weeks. And my son came home dabbing, hitting the nene, all type. Man, boy, you don't cut that shit out. Go inside your motherfucking head. What's up, homie? I'm hungry. All right, make something. What do you want to make? What do you want? I want pancakes. You want pancakes? What kind? Um, pancakes. What kind? You want apples? We don't have apples all today, so what you want to put in there? Remember what? what mommy put last time? What she put? Baking soda. And what else? We don't. Oh yeah, we don't have any more syrup. See, want me to go to the store? You want me to go to the store with me? We get what? Syrup. We have guava. Oh, you want guava? Yeah, we have guava. All right, I'll make guava.
I woke up with my sock off. Where's your sock at, honey? I woke up with my sock off. I don't know why. But I woke up with my sock off. Bill Nye. What? Bill Nye. Man. See? Okay. High five. But mom said I can only what did watch I say? PBS Kids. Maybe Bill and I. I like Bill and I, the science guy. Remember you was talking about the flat earth? No. Remember? No. I was not. At all. You know where to put it? Right here. I was not. No, it's not B. Put it in. Hold on real quick, y'all. Yep. All right. All right, well, pick a documentary to watch. Oh, uh, Royal Cut the Crap, dog. You ain't getting none of my food, dog. What is that? Huh? Which one is this? Bill Nye. I found Bill Nye. Bill Nye, the So, that's the most funniest episode. Is that who? Probability. That's the most funniest episode. Oh, yeah? Yeah. But yeah, so right no, off. I want a corn dog. <laughs> a corn dog? Yeah, I want to drive. I want a corn dog. Wait, no, Dad. Nuggets? Yes, I want nuggets. Nuggets. Ah, we eat. I made this. Turn it on. Sorry about that. Um, uh, any of y'all in California? How many of y'all are actually in California? Anybody on here in California? Dang, that's crazy, bro. Y'all niggas all around the world. Hey, you tired of snow being all in your videos, bad weather? 
you know, angry driver, come to California. Hold on real quick, y'all. The car is hard. The hero is hero. Hope you call us back, Gio. I'm Tama. Flip flop in front of baby at mom house. The hood life was wild. They was calling that Gio. I look up to the sky and ask, what is the purpose? Like, am I supposed to run with the click and I'm purple? Should I perpetrate the trace of someone who will hurt you? My bad. My bad, my bad. I was about to give y'all that. My son came in and cut it off. Y'all want that? You want me to give y'all that real quick? I'll give y'all that real quick if y'all really want that. Just real quick. Quick little sample. All right. If I die in the street, am I grateful to witness? If I ride in the beef, is a great street to witness? Feeling lost like I should just go to the church But if Jesus died for our sins Should I pray for forgiveness The chorus is hoarse The hero is hero Hope you call us back to you On time out Flip flop in front of baby at mom house The hood life was wild They was calling that Geo I look up to the sky and ask what is the purpose Like am I supposed to run with the click and I'm purple Should I perpetrate the trace of someone who will hurt you Should I become Stefan or become the new Earth? My enemies, they don't see my divinity. I hired an enemy prior to hire my energy. Losing friends since I've been alive. Negative moments don't come across these positive signs. Wake up in the morning and I ask myself, is life worth living? Should I blast myself? And I did. Got my face tatted and never looked back and struggling. It came around clear and I was bubbling. Staying in the gym doing suicide hustle. It's suicide. 17 doing 17s. Coach told me that I wasn't going to make it to the league. Left me seven dream shot. Martin Luther King, my game on the line. I never shot the free throw. How could I be focused when my coach was the PO? Correction, officer made me want to drop out. On my way to the officer, like, fuck it, I'm a cop out. As I'm leaving the lobby, thinking, what a new hobby I need. Obviously, I'm tired of these niggas bothering me. Ask myself, how can I leave when I ain't really get to see my dad? And these niggas was like the new father to me. Give y'all a little sample of that. You ain't gonna get the whole thing though. Okay. Well, you're 55 plus, you'll be in about 10 minutes. I'm not done. Y'all not ready for that type of shit. That's some other shit right there. Benio, I'll get back to y'all niggas in a minute. Got some children to take care of.